come back. So that's a nice thing to see. So let's focus on the good news, the bright stuff. Returning players health-wise. Yeah, and some big names coming back. Tobin Heath has been out nine months. Look at that, last played in September. We know what she can do on the field. Samantha Mewis, due to a knee injury, has been out seven months. And boy, was she playing well when she left the team. Julie Ertz, another player out the last four games, last three months, a knee injury, just coming back. She'll start today. And Amy Rodriguez out the last two years, 2016 with the birth of her son, 2017 with an ACL injury. And then the one that everyone has the question mark over, Rose Lavelle, such a talented young player. She's only played one game with the national team in the last year, and she should get some minutes tonight as well for the United States. But there are some injuries here, and Jill Ellis has to be concerned with these, and we start at the very top of the player that was in form in Mallory Pugh. Yeah, and she gets some back, and then now you got some that have gone away. Pugh just injuring her knee out two to three months, they're saying. Uh, with her NWSL team in Washington, Kelly O'Hara. Look at all those backs that are out. Casey Short, Emily Sonnet with a back. Lynn Williams just back in with her NWSL team with a hamstring. Abby Dalkemper, who was in the last game against China, hurt her knee. And so this is a constant source of frustration and something they're looking at with the national team is how to keep these players healthy. With the one-year-out mark, that is something that they're going to be focused on going forward. An important friend lead tonight. Stay with us when we return to Cleveland. Lineups, the kickoff is coming up next. I spent the last four years pulling this out of the storm. I thought that was a legend. Sir Doug? Bud Light Lime. And Bud Light Orange. These are very rare. Dilly Dilly. Dilly Dilly. dilly. Oh, uh, here, let me just uh, move this. Bit of misery. Dilly Dilly. Yeah, yeah. Bud Light Lime and Bud Light Orange. Brewed with real citrus peels. Welcome back to Cleveland and of course the United States women's national team for the second time in six days getting set to take on China. This is First Energy Stadium, the surface in wonderful condition here. The rainbow numbers here tonight due to Pride Month. So the U.S. women's national team. Continental Tire Analyst Corner, let's go back to Thursday. Julie, take it away. No surprise here, Megan Rapino on the set piece. Just popping this one in perfectly. And again, no surprise on the other end of it is Alex Morgan for her 13th goal in 14 games. And those two have been something the second half of 2017 and going into 18. And to give you an indication of just how good they've been, look at those numbers. 13 in the last 14 games. And as I said, and then Megan Rapino nine assists in the last 11. Boy, and they were really clicking when they had uh, Mallory Pugh out there. It was a three-pronged attack. The United States lineup here tonight in the 4-1-2-2. You see Abby Dalkemper out with that little bit of a knee bang. Sauerbrunn in the middle. Huerta starting on that right side, but pay particular attention. Kristen Press getting that start. Remember in the April games, she was not brought in because she had gone over to play in Europe instead of the NWSL, and she is back in that lineup and will be eager to do well tonight getting her 100th appearance as well. 44 goals for Press Jill Ellis, 76-6 and 15 overall as the U.S. Women's National Team head coach and of course winning the World Cup in 2015. Let's go to China's lineup here tonight. 4-5-1 for China, very similar and up top, Li Ying, seven goals in five games during their Asia World Cup qualifiers. And if it weren't for a great Alyssa Nair save, she would have had one on Thursday night as well. And she's quite a player that will lead the line for them. 
Christina Uncle is your referee. The U.S. in blue, China in red. And it's game off for 90 here in Cleveland. An opportunity for U.S. players here to once again impress the manager. Less than a year away from the World Cup in France next summer. Here's Sofia Huerta getting a start here tonight to the consistent Becky Sauerbrunn. And the U.S. have broken pressure here nicely. And of course, that was the issue in the first game, Julie, was the deep defending of China and trying to break them down. And that's been the biggest challenge to the U.S. When you go back, go all the way back to the Olympics, 2016. Everyone remembers that game against Sweden where they just bunkered in and sat in and the U.S. didn't have the players to break it down. It's something that Jill Ellis recognized right away. She said in these next two years after that Olympics, we need to build creative players that can break down condensed teams. And it's a great challenge for them. They struggled again on Thursday night against it. So we'll see how they do tonight. The big talking point from a tactical perspective from Jill Ellis when we met with her yesterday. U.S. going through a light workout here at First Energy Stadium. Here is Crystal Dunn. Played three different positions on Thursday night in the 1-0 win. Beautiful switch of play here from Rapino. Put it on a dime. Beautiful ball from her. It's Press who carried it inside. Here's Huerta. And a touch from Julie Ertz. Goes out. China will get the throw in here. Had limited chances in that first game. There is their manager, Joshua Chen. Appeared 55 times for China. Also played for Partizan in the former Yugoslavia. And this is only his second game in charge. They've only been together for two weeks. He was very pleased with the opening match. Switch of play. Here's done. Backing in the Chinese defense here. Crystal Dunn tries to get the cross in. First corner of this game will go to the United States. Here is a serious history. And you'll notice from 2004, it has been all the United States. China did get a win in New Orleans in 2015. Rapino, short one. Dunn is not marked. Might have had a shooting opportunity. Elects to get the cross in. Drops at the top of the box. And Huerta caught in possession now. Is there a breakout on here for China? It's going to be a recurring theme we see tonight. China trying to break out on the counter, but otherwise staying very condensed. Rapino, nice early ball from Rapino. Here's a chance for a 1-0 lead over the top. It fell perfectly to Kristen Press. Great start for the United States, though, because already you're seeing them break the lines. Ball is lucky to skip through, and that's one press is going to want to put on frame. Really, for China, too, that's a ball that needs to be cleared. There's put some pace on it, takes a weird bounce, and that is sitting on a platter for Miss Press there. Normally one she would put away. Playing over in Sweden, there's a lot of talk of her coming back to the NWSL. The rights are held by the Houston Dash. Played in four of the seven matches in the 2015 World Cup and had a goal against Australia. Morgan. Pino showing up on the right side of the field now. This seems like a more mobile, more aggressive United States, Julie. Yeah, talking to the players yesterday, that was the one thing they all talked about. Mobility, movement, way too stagnant, they said on Thursday night. And especially across lines, getting in behind, getting some midfielders in behind. Good diagonal ball here. Here's Press with a big first touch. He's going to get there first. Press will square it back. Who's there? Rapino! Look at the flexion and over the top. It'll be another corner for the United States. Five minutes in, throwing herself in front of it was Wu Haiyan. And again, it's Tierna Davidson who's able to play that beautiful ball in, an aggressive first touch that pays off. China unable to get to it. That first touch and press doing well to just find a seam. No one's making that near post run. Where's the seam? You see so many players trying to whip that across the no one. She pulls it back. 
Here's Rapino off the corner. She's been in great form. It goes to the back post. And it'll go out for a goal kick for China. We mentioned only their second match together. And Joshua Chen was the under-20 Chinese men's coach. And of course, you've got a Chinese women's league with eight teams. That's where most of these players play their game in China. How about that if you're Joshua Chen? Your very first game with only two weeks under your belt is, <laughs> is the United States. Your two first two games. He was very happy after the first game in Sandy, Utah, saying he felt his players followed the plan and made it difficult for the U.S. Here is Wang Shanshan now. Holding play up to try and get an overlapping run. She's gotten one. This is Wang Sheng and Cross a little out for the goal kick for the United States. Did they have enough team speed up front to actually play a low block and catch the U.S. on a counter, Julie? No, and, that, and that's the challenge with a Chinese team is athletically they're not going to be able to stay with their team speed. And so they're going to have to technically break the U.S. down or catch them on a counter. But they've got a finisher and a player and Li Ying up front, number 10, and some wingers who you just saw, number 7 and number 11, who provide some of that speed. But China doesn't want to see this game open up and making it a, a foot race. That's, that got, does not play into their hands. Morgan got caught from behind there, and a tackle coming in there from China's run Guishi. <laughs> Alex Morgan has just been in spectacular form. Finally has gotten over all those injuries. And your set piece specialist, Megan Rapino, does have her to, to her right, who is wide open. Rapino. It's time the delivery out there. And the U.S. immediately pressing here. Great work from Julie Ertz to win the ball back for the U.S. Sauerbrunn now. This is the 19-year-old Tierna Davidson who, as Julie mentioned, loves hitting that uh, big, beautiful ball out of the back diagonally, but she gets caught in possession here. He comes back shoulder to shoulder there with Li Ying. And cleans up her mistake. But an Irby moment there for the 19-year-old out of Stanford. Rapino in the interior of midfield here. That's a nice give and go with Mewis. I'll make that Morgan Bryan. Great to see her back. Wang Shanshan knocked it inside now, and there's potential for something here for China. Wang Shanshan again. Got players getting into the box. It's a curling ball. It's not a bad idea. It almost picked out Li Ying. Be smart, be smart, ladies. So our answer to counterattacking, well, that was a pretty good-looking counterattack from China. And there's Wang on that left side who has some pace to get in. She held a run, stayed on side. Becky Sauerbrunn, and then here's Tierna Davidson. Rapino, who's really picking up the ball in a lot of good areas here, tries to thread the needle there to Sam Ewis. It's one back now by Kristen Press. Towards Morgan, and Morgan got knocked off it. Goes back to the goalkeeper, Peng Shumung. One thing the U.S. has been working on a ton, and when they do it well, it's so effective, is as soon as they lose the ball, is putting pressure, especially in that attacking third. Winning it back, pushing it back down the throats of their opponents. And they've had great success in 2018 doing that. And I know that was another key and theme they were talking about for today. It's Julie Ertz. It's pretty interesting now. We're looking at her as a number six holding midfielder now. She was best 11 at the last World Cup as a center back. A natural move for her. Here she is now in the pivot. Hurts towards Rapino. Does well to knock it back to Dunn here. 
confident possession from the United States here, 10 minutes in. And out for the goal kick. China has already qualified for France 2019, and they're already set. And here's who is already in that World Cup. Brazil, Chile, Italy, Spain, Thailand, and uh, all the Asian countries, obviously, Korea, Republic, Japan, China. Yeah, first 14 two, left. Yeah, first two European teams to go in with Italy and Spain topping their groups. Five went in for Asia. China qualified third out of Asia. Here's done now. Oh, she had a wide open Alex Morgan. Press is going to get there. Good support from behind. It's Huerta who whips the ball, and it drops to Ertz. She'll get a shot off, and it's wide. I think that's Sam Mewis. Is there an advantage to qualifying early, Julie, when it comes to preparation, or is it better like the U.S. who has to qualify in October and keep things ratcheted up here uh, until they get through that process? I'd actually like to see all qualifiers happen earlier in April. I mean, I, and you know you're in. You, you can, besides just competitively, think about marketing and exposure for the game and the women's game and being able to promote who's going to be in it, who's going. And so... I mean, we didn't even find out until what last month where, where the you know the Concacaf qualifiers are. Come on, it's ridiculous. It's not a bad ball, Wang Shan Shan. Now, she's got running into the box, and she'll try to curl it back. That could be out for a goal kick. It is deemed by your referee today, Christina Uncle. There is Becky Sauerbrunn. What a model professional she has been. What a World Cup she had in 2015, Julie. Boy, and, and she gets the nickname given to her by Kate Markgraf in, in that World Cup as Butter. B Becky Butter Sauerbrunn, and it's a perfect one because she's just so, so calm and composed on that ball. And then she's found a, a young, younger protege in Tierna Davidson next to her in that center back position. Yeah, that uh, experienced veteran with the young rising center back, always a wonderful combination. We've seen it many times before. Sauerbrunn has started under Jill Ellis more than any other player on the U.S. I asked Jill Ellis why she didn't have the captain's armband on, actually, in the last game. I noticed Alex Morgan had it on, and uh, she said that she's wanting to expand the leadership pool and include more players and uh, is going to give it to the player on the field with the most caps at the moment. It's so it, when Carly Lloyd came in, for example, in the last game, Alex Morgan took it off and gave it to Carly Lloyd because she obviously is the most cap player. There's good looking Alex Morgan and she has been in wonderful form. 28 years of age, wearing the captain's armband tonight with the Orlando Pride. She appears tonight for her 142nd time at 28 years of age. She's won it back, she drives it in, crosses cut out. Good defending there from Wu Haiyan. It's a few goals right there, 86. 86. She's climbing up that chart. Yeah. Chasing Carly, chasing Tiffany Milbert at 100. Press is drawn true. Two gets the cross and Rapino trying to get there. China with some nice little tight play to break some pressure here. They're going to earn a free kick after the foul from Sofia Huerta from Boise, Idaho. Speaking Berta of actually played for the under-20 Mexico team before shifting allegiances to the U.S. <laughs> and you were high on Huerta's performance on Thursday. Yeah, I thought she brought a spark for sure and got forward. And this is the beauty of a Crystal Dunn on that left side on the ball right now and Huerta on the right. Jill Ellis wants him to play aggressive, play high. They play in a big shape. It's a lot of responsibility on those two center backs when you give it away like that. But there's always Sam Mewis, and she gives it away. <laughs> on cue.
Major League Soccer on ESPN presented by Audi. It is back on Saturday, June 30th, 7th Eastern. Atlanta United taking on Orlando City from the Mercedes-Benz Stadium in Atlanta, Georgia. What an environment this is. Coverage beginning at 7 Eastern on ESPN and also streams live on the ESPN app. Uh, it is a happening in Atlanta, that is for sure. China now walks up to this. This is Zhao Wei, played in the 2008 Olympics in Beijing, and at that time she was the youngest player on China. And Dunn will see this out. ESPN's presentation of U.S. soccer is brought to you by Advil. You'll ask what pain with Advil and Coppertone. Coppertone sport is proven to protect. Beautifully flighted ball and uncharacteristic control there from Megan Rapino, and boy, has she just uh, rebirthed Julie. Yeah, Megan Rapino is that creative link we talked about that you need to break down those tighter compact defenses and but you need more than just a mega rapino to do that but she has been consistently good on the ball we talked about her nine assists in her last 11 games scoring as well and i think too much of the responsibility falls on her for that we've got to get a couple players in midfield able to break it down as well so Morgan coming back deep into midfield to pick that ball up. 17th minute, still nil-nil. No, no. That's a heavy hit there from Sofia Huerta, who is uh, playing the physical game here a bit today. <laughs> not, not much to discuss there, right? That one's pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> Certainly uh, has a lot to give going forward. And Jill Ellis saying, you know, she still wants to see her improve the one-on-one -on -one defending side of her game. But uh, certainly has come out very aggressive here today. Got a good matchup there against Wang Shan Shan. Hurts. And Alex Morgan thought Kristen Press was making that run and let it run. Goes out for a throw. -in. going to be a free kick for the U.S. Sam Mewis. Second half sub on Thursday night. 36th appearance here tonight. Her... Good to see her back in the lap. She has really gotten a lot of games over the last 12, 13 months. Great to see her back. The, the challenge for Jill is now she's got to continue to manage a lot of those minutes with those players coming back. Davidson stepped up nicely. Real pressure here. The U.S. have a lot of players around the China box here. Morgan she, Bryant. She's got three midfielders. Morgan Bryant on the ball right now that are all coming back from injuries. None of them probably going to be able to go 90 today. Huerta, the idea was there to try and drop it in there to Morgan, but overhit it out for the goal kick for China here in the 19th minute. You look, though, at this first 18 minutes and them able to get in behind some good looks. A great chance by Kristen Press in front of goal. I mean, the energy and the movement much better than Thursday. Already in these first 18, 19 minutes. Hurts chests it down. What a wonderful play from her. Press got caught in possession. Huerta, Mewis under pressure. Clips a beautiful ball out wide. Hertz tried to get the cross in, and it's blocked by Kong Han. Rapino getting beyond her. 
is Dunn. Nice step over for Dunn. Can she get a cross in? That is not a bad ball, just over everybody. Predominantly right-footed, playing on the left side. And again cleared as more balls being rifled into the box here by the U.S. in the 21st minute. Played uh, in the J League in Japan for Gamba Osaka. When, when you look at all the, the different outside backs that Jill Ellis has gone through, right? It's probably the one position that has just been this revolving door <laughs> of different people going through. And even into 2018, when she wanted to be settled, and you looked at that injury list we showed early in the game. Part of that issue is a lack of consistency with players being healthy, but also Jill just not being settled on it yet. But this is a player on the ball right here, Crystal Dunn, although I would argue it's probably not her most favored position. Um, here's a player that can play literally on, on any line. And, and that's one you need on the field. And here's another one you need on the field. I mean, this transition with Julie Ertz going into that center midfield position. Glenn, you mentioned it early. She was an all-star center back from the World Cup team and a great center back. But when they put her in that defensive holding midfielder position, you know the energy she's going to bring defensively. And there's the other thing she brings is some great goal scoring presence. Six goals in her last 10 games. Morgan Schapel go wide and and yeah she we have seen her grow in that position too from when she first was given the opportunity from Jill Ellis and slowly you could see her getting more comfortable adding to the attack on a day like today against the compact defense we've seen her kind of creeping into the attack a little bit and, and playmaking and fighting and biting and she just brings this bite that is needed and necessary and an energy to the field that you love to see and she is a wrecking ball. She'll, I mean, she'll get in tackles. And, and literally, she was at a point where, you know, she wasn't getting much time. She wasn't playing at center back. She was spending a lot of time on the bench. She was frustrated, I know. And here, what a great story. Here she goes from, you know, World Cup starter at center back, all-star, to sitting on the bench, and they're not sure of her role, to, you know, recreating herself in midfield. She also makes her so valuable, her versatility. We had a great conversation with her yesterday, very animated, uh, very positive about what's going on. And the offside flag is up. She was also talking uh, very much about how the U.S. had to play better against the Chinese compact and, and deep defending team, and that included her getting more involved right. in the game from an attacking perspective. The tendency sometimes for, for center backs and deeper lying players to kind of not join in against teams that sit deep. Ewis, a little bit of trouble with that control, but has won it back. She'll play it wide now. Press has come inside with her touch. Rapino with a scissor-like run across the face of her. This is good ball movement here. And in the end, the final ball not there, but the U.S. painting some pretty pictures across this canvas with those passes. Mewis does well, too, because that first touch got away from her, gets the ball back again, finds a little space out wide. And it's exactly where you want. You want Alex Morgan isolated on that outside, maybe take on there, get a touch into the box. Wang Chun lost possession. Here's Morgan Bryan, a beautiful clipped-in ball that gets cut out. Think about how vital she was in the 2015 World Cup. She has just been besieged by injuries, but her insertion in the lineup pushed Carly Lloyd higher up the field and the rest is history in 2015. U.S. knocking off Japan in the final.
Li Ying plays it forward. And Shung tried to get turned, and Huerta will go back to Ashlyn Harris, who we've hardly mentioned here, getting the start tonight. For, for Alyssa Nayer. Ended a little bit weird, didn't she? See her grab it. Came back amazingly from that ACL injury. Lupino tonight, 137th appearance for the U.S. with 36 goals. With the Seattle Reign, played with Lyon in France. Again, some good tight play here from China. Can they get out of here, though? That's doing a good job of defending here. And they've won it back. Big tackle from Mewis. Could it lead to something here? Ertz, Rapino in a good pocket of space here. Dunn creeping up on the left. Tries to thread the needle and make Dunn run for that one. Goes out for the goal kick. <laughs> Dunn's fast, but she's not that fast. <laughs> <laughs> I think that first option, sliding it through there, not in behind, was the one on. But Dunn, very active on that left side. That's a good little partnership there with Rapino and, and Dunn. I mean, and, and when we talk about, you know, the players that Jill Ellis has been trying to find to break down those more compact defenses, you, you know, you look at the ones that we, we talked about in the open that are just coming back from in, injuries, the Tobin Heaths, the Rose Lavelle. She hasn't had those players. Huerta, and he goes over the head of Alex Morgan. Big announcement, the NWSL is coming to ESPN News, and here are some of the upcoming games. The Chicago Red Stars, Portland Thorns on Saturday, Washington Spirit, Orlando Pride, and then the Pride and Courage on Lifetime. So a ton of great games and great announcers on those games. Jen Hildreth, Kate Markgraf, Dalen Cuff will be on the call of Chicago and Portland. That's awesome. It's great to watch. The national team players competing with their club teams in the NWSL. Heading into a World Cup year. Direct ball over the top. And seen out there by Tierna Davidson. Talk about her a little bit. The 19-year-old here is, is making one heck of a push, and she's been capped to limited. Uh, only seven caps tonight or eighth. She's 19 years of age. And she really has blossomed here in recent times. And, and you always look in the center back, of course, you want someone good defensively. You want someone with pace, but you also want someone that's going to set the play. And she's so good on the ball and so composed on the ball. Plays a lot at that defensive center mid role for Stanford University where she plays in college. Just won the college cup with them there. Uh, but has great versatility as well. Can sure play beyond outside a little bit, yeah, yeah, and and really has come into this and hasn't blinked. There's done now to Rapino. Ball goes into the box. Yesterday uh, we know she was <laughs> yeah. studying for organic chemistry, which uh, I know is one of your great subjects she, at Stanford. Uh, my favorite subject. Uh, she had an organic chem final on. Into the box, Morgan. We'll get back to that in a second. And pouncing on it here is Peng Shumong. Who plays for Jiangsu. She's only 20, 20 years of age in goal for China. Yeah, China had uh, organic chem yesterday and networks today, apparently. I said, what? what's that class? I never had that one. Digital, business, social. I would have taken networks over organic chemistry, I think. <laughs> yeah, it's all about relationships, networking. Huerta can't get there. And there is a good look at Tierna Davidson. She's got a wonderful left foot as well. And she's from Menlo Park, California. She's got her first cap against Denmark in the She Believes Cup. While we're on the subject of Stanford, we should mention Kristen Press getting her 100th cap, of course, today, which is a great milestone for her and she is the fourth cardinal to get her 100th cap the only other university with more 
North Carolina? Yes. Quite a bit more. 12, in fact. But we're catching up. Anson Dorrance is going to be glad I got that right. <laughs> it's going to be worried if you didn't. Rapino. Ewis. Switch of play here. Here is Kristen Press. Drives the ball in. Laid down all. They try to pick out Ertz. Is going to stuff it in. The offside flag is up. It won't count. But there was some wonderful combination play inside the penalty area from the U.S. Speaking of Ertz getting into the attack. I'd argue a little bit too unselfish, right? I think Rapino probably could have put this one away. And if it wasn't for that first one, she put it up on a platter for Ertz. And here it is again. Could Pino have just taken this one herself? I think she could have. Is she off? So I would agree with that. Yes. You want, you want to believe she should uh, take that responsibility there, right? But. <laughs> I think she said, why didn't you take that yourself? I didn't know it was coming. What are you doing? Spreading the love. 32nd minute. Becky Sauber, what young player would not listen to her? Switches it to Davidson. And she's got done. That's a good ball over the top and just over hit. But tell you what, to have a defender that has a range of passing like that it, it is something special and can really add to the attack. In game after game, Julie, we see her hitting diagonal yeah. balls and, and, and really and accurate passes over distance. And how about what it does to the defense, too? Right, because they know they're then vulnerable and behind with that ball if they're playing too high a line, especially if they don't have the pace. So it adjusts them to play deeper, which opens up space in the midfield. I mean, it changes everything tactically for you when you have a player that can play that ball consistently so well. Charlie Lloyd, Ali Long warming up for Jill Ellis and the U.S. national team. Here's Huerta. Adjust! Sam, adjust! You're in the back line now! Ashlyn Harris getting her 17th cap today for the U.S. women's national team. 32 years of age. And there is Carly Lloyd, two-time FIFA Women's World Player of the Year and Ali Long. Two very differing stories with the U.S. Women's National Team. U.S. Uh, dominating a lot of categories here, including the possession category. They've played a lot in the final third of China. Still have not uh, produced the execution to take a lead here. <laughs> Lin Yupin, and this one will go all the way back again to Ashlyn Harris, who really has not been tested yet. He's on that 2015 World Cup team, a three-time NCAA champion at the University of North Carolina. What do you think the goalkeeping position is right now for Jill Ellis, Julie? I think she has Nair as her number one, but is also recognizing she needs to still look at other goalkeepers. Tempo is lifted here. We'll talk more about that at halftime. Here is Kristen Press. She'll drive it to the far post. Rapino! It is 1-0 U.S. Crossing, finishing at its best. A goal of real quality here. In her 100th appearance, press with the delivery. Rapino scores the goal. She wasn't knocking that one back, was she? <laughs> She's like, I'm taking this one. And look at the ball in by press. Takes a peek, sees where it's on, and that is just a beauty. 
Pino, what they always tell you, hit it down and across the face of the goal, back where it came from. That keeper caught trying to cover her near post. And a beautiful finish by Megan Rapino. Fantastic goal for Rapino, her third of the year, her 37th all time for the U.S. And you love when a winger gets into the box and scores off the delivery from her opposite winger. Fantastic goal, U.S. with the 1-0 lead here. Still getting it done, Megan Rapino. Han Pung knocked it back inside. Here's Ertz. Press, Ertz. Huerta, all the way back to Ashlyn Harris now. And definitely a, a, a more aggressive China in their attacking third. You're seeing they've got three, sometimes four players on the ball. Quick restart towards Rapino, and this will be collected by the goalkeeper, Peng Shumeng. Whereas on Thursday night, you'd look up and China would have one person on that back line with four U.S. players. Now look at that front line. You can get a glimpse on the left side of your screen. You got the one running high, but you also got two pushed high in number seven, the Wongs. Seven and 11. Wong Shuang and Wong Shan Shan. Twenty-eight-year-old Han Peng off the throw-in. Back in 2014, had a goal against the United States in a 1-1 draw. <laughs> Lin Yupin plays for Wuhan FC. Chinese Women's Professional Soccer League, which is comprised of eight teams. And we did find out that the uh, president of China is very much, uh, and I know you were all over this topic, Julie, very much in pushing the yeah. women's game in China. I'm fascinated by that story. Well, just soccer in general, building it into the curriculum of elementary schools and getting younger kids to play at school. And Building it into the curriculum, the academies. He wants to win a World Cup. Decision has to be made here. It's Ashlyn Harris off her line. She's had a few injuries in her career as well. ACL, shattered thumb. ESPN Plus is your destination for MLS Live and MLS games, including uh, Columbus and Atlanta tomorrow night. Go to the ESPN app to sign up for a free trial. Features six MLS games Wednesday night. With that subscription, you also get MLS Rewind with Taylor Twelman and Alejandro Moreno. Highlights from every game, interviews, questions, all for you, the fan. That shows posts every Monday night on ESPN Plus. So another great information source there. Sauerbrunn, Davidson. Here is Dunn, nice touch inside, right into space. Scissor-like crossing run there from Rapino. It's helped on now to press, press one time ball into the box was a good idea. And the high pressure coming from the United States now. And it forces this. Fortieth minute. Twenty-five year old Sofia Huerta. Morgan. And you can see that Samantha Mewis, Morgan Bryan just kind of working their way through this yeah. game, getting very important minutes here. Yeah, and, and, and really gathering that confidence back in. Morgan Bryan 
been out as well with an injury. Rapino trying to make some problems here. Was at Lyon, of course, and was on a multi-year contract and just decided she wants to come back. Wasn't getting the minutes that she wanted. A lot of competition with that team. It's so good there. So right now, Chicago has the rights to Morgan Bryan. Looks like she's going to end up there, of course. Han Peng. One time ball from Wang Shuang, who was not the best. Sarbra now out of St. Louis, Missouri. Pino. Oh, it's a beautiful little touch to Mewis. Here is Sam Mewis in full flight now. Driving down the right. Press with the cross is cut out. Press gets it back. And this one will go over everybody and out for the goal kick for China here in the 42nd minute. And the beauty of that one little touch by Rapino that just takes out two, three players getting Mewis in. Frees that line for her with a lot of confidence right now. We love to see it. A player who's battled through a lot with injuries also. I like how Rapino and Press have mixed their game up tonight. They, they've come inside quite a bit, but have also provided the width at times and been very mobile. There's China now. They've got five, six in attack here. Sitting back as deep as they were, maybe in Sandy, taking a little bit more risk here today. Here's Li Ying. Li Ying will get a shot off. She had one of the testers in Sandy, and that'll be easily handled by Ashlyn Harris. Li Ying plays for Shandong Ladies and is one of the veterans on this team. Led all of Asian qualifiers, too, and there's a lot of quality there with her seven goals. Less than a year away from the Women's World Cup in France, of course, the Men's World Cup opening up this Thursday with Russia taking on Saudi Arabia in the opener. Dunn hustling back. It's crazy we're just two days away from that. And tomorrow, the big decision on the unified bid of the United States, Canada, and Mexico against the bid of Morocco for who is going to host the 2026 World Cup, and we all know what is at stake mm. with, with that. And that will be found out uh, very early tomorrow morning. Sauerbrunn there elects to just let it run back to Ashlyn Harris. And a ball from Mewis. Hit with real pace, got it quickly to Rapino. Trying to give and go to Dunn it was Morgan Bryan. Coming up at halftime, the Road to France calendar. We're going to take a look at uh, what is up for the U.S. Women's National Team. A look at Julie's U.S. Women's National Team player pool. So I haven't seen that yet, so I'm looking forward to seeing that. And then Megan Rapinoe's goal in the, her 37th. We'll take a look at that in first half highlights. Hurts. What a tackle. And she gets fouled. Wang Shan Shan. And Hurts has had some injury problems herself. Plays the game hard, Julie. She's, she's saying, don't send him over. I'm fine. I just need a moment. Catchers are there. A little bit. Julie's uh, husband, Zach Ertz, Super Bowl winner. The Philadelphia Eagles. Everybody says JJ, and I'm remembering Julie Johnston, who's now Ertz. Rapino. Jets. And it's going to be a free kick. 
And there again is Ertz in the mix inside the penalty area trying to stab in goal number two. <laughs> Offside flag was up. Always in the mix. Not sure. Ah, it was there. Off the press header. Yep, that second ball. I thought it was a deflection at first, but it was a press header. Well, she definitely brings an intimidating presence to the U.S. Women's National Team midfield. First half comes to an end. Wrap it up, Julie. I think a good half for them. They're going to be pleased. They're going to be, hopefully they can get more on the, on, on the board because of that. All the production they got out of that, they probably think they probably should have had more, but a good first 45 for the United States. You're going to see some fresh legs coming in that second half for sure. She's going to look at some players here. Kristen Press to that woman, Megan Rapino. That is the lone goal. Take a look at this. Feast your eyes on this header from Rapino. U.S. Women's National Team with a 1-0 lead over China.